I'm astrologer and life coach Penny Dix. Welcome to my YouTube channel and welcome to the sign of Gemini. Because Gemini, for you today, whether your sun is in Gemini, whether it's your rising sign, also known as the ascendant, or your moon sign, this reading is your ultimate overview for 2024. 2024 already, Gemini, how are you coping? Because, whoa, what a few years we've had. And will 2024 be any different? Well, it's certainly going to be full of some interesting uh, twists and turns. What I've picked out are a few of the key points. So, um, you know, during the year, obviously, I will do longer looks at all these individual points and make separate videos about them. But these were just the kind of skimming the surface because to be quite honest, there is so much happening in 2024 that it's almost too difficult to know where to start. However, one of the things that I did, you know, that, that is important about this year, 2024, is about the planet Pluto. Now, Pluto the god of the underworld, um, Pluto that uh, we see as this, this kind of devilish kind of king of Hades. Did you know Pluto is actually a feminine energy in astrology? Well, there you go. You've learned something. Pluto is actually a feminine energy. It was the Romans that gave it a masculine energy because of the patriarchy. Anyway, now I've got that off my chest, Gemini. Um, Pluto is one of the big players this year because it's flirting. It's been going in and out just a bit towards the end of 2023 with the sign of Aquarius, having spent 15 or so years in the sign of Capricorn. Pluto, to start with, is kind of still trying to clear things up in the sign of Capricorn before it moves into Aquarius on the 21st. And this will be in your ninth house, Gemini. This is the part of your chart that's to do with education and higher learning. It's also the part of your chart to do with spirituality. And you know, Gemini, you're an air sign. Aquarius is an air sign. Gemini, you're mutable. Aquarius is fixed. I think, Gemini, Pluto is encouraging you to try and tune in much more to your intuition rather than relying just on uh, kind of facts and evidence. I am not saying that we don't need evidence, good evidential um, material to back up certain things. But, you know, with Pluto's move into Aquarius, the whole shift of consciousness is going to undergo a massive change. Because with this energy shifting into um, Aquarius. We are all going to be in different ways woken up because Aquarius is a sign of awakening. We're going to be woken up to recognizing there are more things in the universe and the cosmos, in our solar system, on our planet, it's not just what we can see, what we can feel, and what we can touch. And you of all the signs really need your evidence because you overthink everything and you can get really quite paranoid about things if they don't somehow lock in or match up. But this Pluto in Aquarius view is going to, in a sense, educate you to allow your intuition to switch on, to really switch on, 
and to take you to a part of your kind of brain, and I mean that, a part of your brain which is not where you have all that kind of rational, logical thinking going on, but the right side of the brain, where the more creative and inspirational side of our lives can unfold. So the day that Pluto moves into Aquarius, the sun is also conjunct Pluto. It's almost like the sun in Aquarius is giving Pluto a round of applause and saying, welcome. We have been waiting for you a long time to be here. Because remember, none of us alive today have ever experienced Pluto, the planet of transformation, the planet of empowerment, the planet of the alchemist, turning base metal into gold. None of us have experienced Pluto in the sign of Aquarius because of its massively long orbit round the sun, something like 246 or 247 years. How is it going to affect you? I think it's going to be really good. I think you have to embrace this because I do think you can really learn so much from Pluto's move into your ninth house. 20 years, you've got it here. Whoa, I wish I was 20 years younger and a Gemini. I'd be super excited. But let's move on because Mercury, your ruling planet, of course, is doing its dance with its retrogrades this year. So we have Mercury, the planet of communication. It actually goes direct just at the beginning of the year on the 2nd of January, having been retrograde for a while. So it does then go direct. So it's quite a good start to the year. And Mercury goes retrograde in Aries, which is your 11th house. And that's on the 1st of April. So you've noticed I've missed out a big chunk of the year. This is not because there's nothing going on, but because we would be here for about three hours if I went through every twist and turn of every transit of what's unfolding. And I really want to give you Gemini the headlines. Listen, none of us have got good attention spans. We get bored very quickly. So, if you're still here now, then I must be doing something right. Must be my Mercury in the sign of Gemini. So let's have a look. Mercury goes retrograde in Aries in your sign of hopes and wishes on April Fool's Day, the 1st of April. Then on the 8th of April, we have the first of a solar eclipse in Aries in the 11th house, remember the part of your chart to do with, with ideas, with dreams, with the community at large. It's a new moon. It's a total solar eclipse. This brings massive change. This could see you being so radical about a new idea you've got. And it's almost like I can see you, you've been working on something for some time, and then you screw up all the plans you've made, chuck them out and start again because you've had the most amazing piece of insight around that solar eclipse on the 8th of April. I will be doing a separate video which will talk about each of the signs for the solar eclipse in Aries on the 8th. Now, April is also a very important month with regard to the planet Jupiter, my big boy Jupiter, and one of my other big boys, Uranus. 
Now, Jupiter, as you know, is the planet of expansion, luck, opportunity. It's also those higher frequencies of spirituality. This is going to be a highly spiritual year for you, Gemini. I really feel that. Jupiter has been in Taurus for a while. And there is some good news because it's actually going to enter your sign on the 25th of May, because currently it's in your 12th house, which is very much about the inner you, your psyche, your soul, and where you can feel a bit restricted and you don't like the regimentation and where you can overthink. And Jupiter might have been expanding that kind of energy for you. You've also got the planet Uranus here. Uranus, the planet of freedom and rebellion. This, this is difficult. This Jupiter-Uranus conjunction in Taurus in your 12th house is like fight flight. Which way do you go? Do you stay and face the music or do you run? Do you run into yourself? Because whichever way you turn around this hall of mirrors, you're going to be seeing yourself. So on a world stage level and on a world higher consciousness elevated level, this conjunction is massive. And I will talk about it in a separate video, obviously. It's on the 20th of April. So April is a very important month. We could see turbulence in the world economy. For you personally, I just think it's going to have you a little bit at sixes and sevens with yourself. And the best way to handle this is to ground yourself. Find yourself a nice Taurus person to sit down and talk it through with. Because um, Taurus is your 12th house and it might be a good time to seek the help of a grounded, earthy person. It can just be a friend, could be a counsellor, a coach. But I just think that there's been so much going on for you, Gemini, that you're, you're just on that verge of, of just kind of like, uh, 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 no more information. I can't take this. Please, please, please let me, let me, you know, can't compute. Computer says no. Computer says no. So let's move on to, um, I'm speedily moving on to July the 15th. When Mars, our planet of action, assertion, sexuality, aggression, war, our god of war, is conjunct. Uranus in Taurus in your 12th house, where you feel so restricted, you're really going to be wanting to break out. You could surprise a lot of people around July, July time, middle of July. You could really shock people and just go, I've had enough, I'm off, I'm out of here. What I would advise you to do, Gemini, is... Cool it. Calm down. Think about what the outcome of this kind of dramatic behaviour might be. And try and respond to what might be triggering it rather than reacting. It may also be a, rea a reaction because we may all be reacting to something that's happening on the planet and that we think, good God, not again. Can't, can't take much more of this. There could be some of that energy around so that on a personal level, it just leaves us in a kind of state of, well, after, uh, yeah, I give up kind of thing. But don't. The cosmos has a plan. Make sure you trust it. Now, on the 2nd of September, Pluto slips back into Capricorn. 
This is your eighth house of joint resources, of um, pensions, investments, other people's money. It's Capricorn. This is where you're very practical. And Pluto has been trying to help you reorganize and restructure your financial status. It's moving back in to put the finishing touches to something you've been working on so that you can now take the necessary steps forward so that you can actually um, overcome this. And that will be very, um, very, uh, it'll be very welcome is the best way to put it. And then by the 17th of September, we have a lunar eclipse in Pisces, and this is in your 10th house. Now the 10th house, remember, is the part of the chart to do with your career and your passion in life. It's where you want to be going. It's a lunar eclipse, which means it's a full moon. It may be that one path that you have been following to do with a passion, to do with something that has perhaps been a, a dream, either comes to some sort of completion, or you can see the light at the end of the tunnel as to when it will complete, because sometimes a lunar eclipse can be a kind of a delaying energy that just delays what you're trying to manifest. So then, of course, we always have eclipses at the same time. So then by the 2nd of October, we have a solar eclipse in Libra. So this is a new moon. And it's in your fifth house of creativity, which really is rather good. And I think could be very good for you. I think it will give you a chance to get a little bit more balance back where things have felt a little bit unstable. I think it's going to give you a chance to relax, to enjoy maybe a late summer break, to enjoy having fun with friends. And then Pluto, our planet of transformation, goes direct in Capricorn, in your eighth house, where it's been sorting things out, tweaking things, to do with your finances on the 11th of October. This is where you will see your financial situation. Um, you'll see the structure of how it's going to be for quite a long time to come. It's kind of cementing it, setting it in place. Because by the 19th of November, Pluto finally moves for the next 20 years, into Aquarius, in your ninth house. Remember I said, this for you is about your spirituality. This is about you getting out of that cerebral part of your thinking and really trusting your gut instinct more. It's there, you've got it, but your mind gets in the way, you overthink it. Remember, Gemini, it's that first thought that you have. That is the intuition. The intuition always comes as a first thought. It's kind of like, you know, if you're driving a car and you kind of think, oh, wouldn't it be great if I had a parking place just outside that particular shop? And then you think, oh, it's too busy. There'll never, there'll never be a place there. I'll take the outside lane and turn right at the next junction. And you go past the shop and of course someone's just pulling out and that's where your parking place would have been. I'm sure you've experienced that. So this is a year for you to start listening to your intuition. Then your ruling planet Mercury goes retrograde again in Sagittarius, which of course is your opposite sign. So this is in the part of your chart to do with significant relationships. So it's the 26th of November when this particular Mercury retrograde happens. And I think it's just gonna give you a time to actually slow down 
and have some downtime with your significant other if you have one. If you're single and looking Gemini, this could bring someone back from the past. That's often what can happen with a Mercury retrograde. And then moving on to December, you know, the months of, of really December and then into January 2025 quieten down a bit, a little bit like the end of 2023. 2023, December and January 2024, kind of it's like things are ticking over. So it's it's more, we're, 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 we're getting a kind of a, a slowdown. Now Mars, the planet of energy and action and assertion, goes retrograde. Remember, it goes retrograde around every 18 months to two years. And it's going retrograde in your third house, Leo. Now this, of course, is the house of communication. And it goes retrograde on the 6th of December. What it's going to give you a chance to do is to reflect again on the way that you communicate. Are you sometimes too harsh? Are you sometimes too assertive? Do you need to bring a little bit of a kind of a softened tone? Be a little bit less questioning. You know, Geminis love to, um, they make great interrogators because they love to ask questions. They want to know. They have a fabulous thirst for knowledge. So you'll be really working hard on trying to get that energy going. So Mars is just actually asking you to slow down a bit. And then your ruling planet Mercury goes direct in your seventh house on the 15th of December, bringing you up to Christmas and New Year 2024 to make it actually feel as if things just fall into place in quite a nice way. So that that will be an, a nice time of year for you. Mars will finally go direct in the sign of Cancer in your second house of finance. More about that, spoiler alert, at the end of 2024. It will go direct in Cancer in your second house on in February 2025, on the 24th. So there we go. So, wow, Gemini, what a year. I mean... This is just going to be, so this is going to be a year full of change for all of us. I cannot impress enough. Listen to the signs of other people you know. Listen to your rising sign. Listen to your moon sign. If you don't know what they are, book a session with me. Pennydicks.com. I'm not actually touting for business. I'm actually being serious because... We've got some difficult energies to navigate this year. And I really think uh, a session to understand how to navigate your chart through 2024 would be a really good investment for you. So just have a think about that. Remember also to um, like, subscribe to my channel. If this is your first time on my channel, a big welcome to you. I sincerely hope you like my style of astrology. I try to make it simple and understandable and digestible. And hopefully you like what you see. And I'd love it if you'd subscribe to my YouTube channel. And with all that said and done, I wish you a wonderful 2024. And uh, let's see how it unfolds, Gemini. I'm excited for you. I'm excited for all of us. See you soon. Bye for now.